Javelin is a third-generation anti-tank missile that carries image infrared seeker. It's a portable missile, two or three soldiers can operate. Javelin can attack tanks, armored vehicles, buildings, or even helicopters that are flying at low altitude. Javelin is mainly composed of the command launch unit which gives commanding orders and the round. The round is composed of missiles, launchers, batteries, and cooling devices. Missiles are placed inside the launch tube assembly. The launch tube assembly plays the role of a platform from which missiles are launched. There are covers both at the front and the back of the launch tube assembly. The front head cover protects the seeker dome that surrounds the seeker. When missiles are prepared for launch, the front head cover is removed. The back head cover is permanently attached to the launch tube assembly. When missiles are launched, the middle part of the back head cover blows away. As soon as missiles are launched, the launch tube assembly is discarded. The battery and the cooler section contain lithium batteries and argon gas. The battery provides power when missile is inside the launch tube assembly. After a missile launch, the thermo battery inside the missile provides electricity. The argon gas inside the cooler cools down the temperature of the infrared seeker placed inside the missile. The command launch unit is the only reusable device of Javelin. The command launch unit works in conjunction with the launch tube assembly. The round and the command launch unit are electrically and mechanically connected through a locking device. There is a power switch under the command launch unit. When the power switch is off, power is cut off. When it is on day mode, electricity is provided to the command launch unit. At this point, one can activate the seeker and launch missiles, but it is impossible to use the night vision sight. When the switch is on night mode, one can use Javelin's full capability including the night vision sight. An order launch unit is composed of shock absorbers, hand grips, battery compartment, day sight, night vision sight, and eyepiece. A day sight is similar to a telescope. A day sight can magnify a visible ray up to four times its original size. A night vision sight can capture infrared images. Using infrared rays allows distinguishing target at nighttime as well as in inclement weather conditions. A night vision sight is a device that detects heat, so only when there is a big temperature difference between the detected object and surroundings can it achieve high resolution. The detector d cooler cools down the night vision sight to a moderate temperature. It also changes the infrared signals to electric signals, delivering them to the display. There are differences among fields of view that appear by each vision sight. Day field of view of the day sight shows target's visible ray images up to four times magnified. Night field of view of the night vision sight on the other hand, shows black and white images using infrared vision. It shows images with wide field of view which magnifies the target by four times and a nine times magnified target a narrow field of view. The wide field of view is used to search for targets, while the narrow field of view is used to detect targets. Cold area is shown in black color, while hot area is displayed as white. A tank, for example, can be easily detected since the track it moves on or its engine gets heated on move. When it stands still for a long time, it comes off in black color against the surroundings, so one needs to detect it based on its shape. It is also possible to see through the side of the seeker inside a missile. This is how a missile sees a target. It is used when the track gate is fixed to the target. There is a battery that provides electricity to the command launch unit and which lasts for more than four hours. The gunner uses the hand grips that are attached to the side of the machine and takes hold of the command launch unit. To operate Javelin, the gunner uses the controls of the hand grips. By using the controls of the hand grips, one can control almost all functions. On the left side of the hand grips, there are controls such as filter select, focus adjust, sight select, and seeker trigger. This push button switch is used to select the night vision sight filter. Once initiated, the night vision sight filter prevents the enemy from detecting the CLU. The focus adjust switch is used to adjust focus of an image while a night vision sight is in operation. The sight select switch can select the sight presented on the display. The seeker trigger on the left hand grip activates the seeker and fixes the seeker to the target. 
On the right hand grip, there are switches managing attack select, gate adjust contrast, and brightness. And fire trigger. One can switch top attack mode and a direct attack mode using an attack select. The top attack mode is the default mode and it is automatically selected when the seeker is activated. Davlin has two modes, top attack and direct attack mode. In top attack mode, missiles hit upper ends of the targets and explode. The mode is used to aim tanks that have relatively weak upper body. A missile skyrockets after launch, up to 160 meters. It keeps high altitude at its maximum level when the target enters the visible sight and plunges. Even when the target is moving, the missile auto detects it by searching the infrared rays image recorded in its memory. In the top attack mode, the missile goes up to 160 meters at 1300-2000 meters range. When the range is under 1300 meters, the maximum altitude differs by the distance. The minimum attack distance is 150 meters. When a missile destroys targets that have relatively strong upper panels such as buildings, it takes direct attack mode. In the direct mode, the missile ascends up to only 60 meters and flies straight to the target, the missile explodes near the target. The direct attack mode is also used in helicopters that fly at low altitude. By using gate adjust contrast and brightness switch, one can control the brightness and contrast. This switch can only adjust images that are visible through night vision sight. When the power switch is turned to the night mode, and when the night vision side is fully cooled, an image automatically appears. What is displayed is only a basic image, so the brightness and contrast must be meticulously adjusted. An eyepiece consists of an eye cup and a diopter adjust ring. An eye cup is made of rubber, so that touch on the eyes are gentler. A diopter adjust ring is used to set focus of an image in line with a gunner's eyesight power. When the focus is adjusted, the gunner can clearly see the screen display even without wearing glasses. The gunner can see the display of the command launch unit with the above-mentioned eyepiece. Here, the gunner can see the target's image. Indicators presented in green, yellow, and red color light up in the display. Through these indicators, one can check if the device works properly. When the indicator is displayed in green color, it means that the device is working as usual. The indicator marked as day lights up when the power switch is at either day or night position. WFOV indicates that the display is on wide field of view. NFOV indicates narrow field of view. Now, seek appears when seeker trigger is pushed and it shows that seeker has been activated. Top means that the device is in top attack mode, while DIR means that it's in direct attack mode. Finally, FLTR turns on when night vision sight filter is selected. Yellow amber indicator turns on when precautions are required during the missile operation. The indicator at the top left corner shows that the night vision sight has not been cooled, and upon cooling completion, the indicator turns off. The indicator at the bottom right corner signifies that the missile is not yet ready to operate. The red indicator signifies that the device does not work. On the other hand, the indicator at the bottom right corner turns on when there is an error with the missile. Moreover, hang fire indicator lights up when a missile fails to launch even as gunner pulls trigger. BCU indicator signifies that operating time for battery and cooling system is almost running out. It flickers when the remaining operating time is down to just around 30 seconds, and the indicator turns red when the operating time ends. CLU indicator notes that remaining battery time of the command launch unit is around 5 minutes. Stadia on display will change its shape based on the selected view. Stadia on the bottom is permanently displayed, but will be used only in day sight view. In wide field of view, Stadia is marked in two lines. In narrow field of view, each Stadia is shown like this. Seeker is activated once prospect of an attack is evaluated and determined using narrow field of view. When Seeker is activated, flickering track gate will appear. Flickering sign means that target has not been determined. Track gate is used when fixing seeker to a target. The center of the target should align with the center of the track gate and the distance between the edge of the track gate and the edge of the target should be moved as close as possible. Then, gate's height and width should be adjusted using gate adjust contrast and brightness switch. When attempting to attack the upper side of a tank, it is not appropriate to assign a turret. To increase accuracy, the track gate must be placed near the machine's body only.
When seeker trigger is pulled, flickering crosshairs will show. The crosshairs are used to mark the center of the target. When seeker is fixed on target, the track gate and crosshairs are also fixed. When target is fixed, firing trigger is pulled, and missile is launched. When attacking a bunker, track gate should be deployed near a firing port. When aiming at helicopters, target should be adjusted to surround main body only, and not the wings or control room. Shock absorbers protect the device from exterior shock by surrounding the body. The shock absorbers on the upper side protect the gunner's face. The missile is located inside the launch tube assembly. An infrared seeker is located at the front of the missile, and it is covered with a transparent dome. Right behind the seeker is a warhead that neutralizes reactive armor and there is also a guidance electronics unit. The main warhead is in the middle, and the propellant device is at the back. The infrared seeker shows target's magnified visible ray images up to nine times the original size. This is similar to that of the images displayed by the night vision site located in the command launch unit. The image infrared seeker must be kept at a very low temperature. In fact, temperature is lowered when spraying cooling gas from the launch tube assembly to the sensor. The guidance electronics unit controls seeker so that the latter can keep track of the target. When missile flies to the target, the seeker chases after the target and sends the target image to the guidance electronics unit. It also sends signals to the control actuator to control the missile's direction. The precuser is installed to explode the reactive armor. When reactive armor explodes, target's armor gets exposed and the main warhead at the back will destroy the armor. The main warhead can pierce a 600-800mm sized armor. The warhead is ignited by the electronic safe, arm, and fire device. It is designed this way to prevent the missile from harming civilians in case it loses its target during flight. If the electronic safe, arm, and fire device does not ignite the warhead, the missile will not explode just by hitting the ground. There are wings at the back. These are unfolded when inside the launch tube asset and are unfolded upon a missile launch. The wings serve as the lifting force, allowing the missile to fly in a stable manner. Davlin's motors operate in two steps. When gunner pushes the launch button, the launch motor located at the back will ignite first. This motor operates only for a very short time and will push the missile. When a safe distance is secured from the gunner, the flight motor will operate to accelerate the missile. The controls determine missiles flying route and provide electric power to the interior. The controls consist of four control fins, four vanes, and a thermal battery. The control fins and vanes are used to change missiles flying directions. The control fins will automatically unfold when missile passes through launch tube assembly. The fins are controlled automatically by the control actuator, and the fins determine missiles direction. Vanes change flying route by slanting the exhaust to one side. Along with control fins, vanes also help control directions of missiles. The thermal battery provides electric power to the interior of the flying missile. With the onset of Ukraine-Russia war, Javelin has received new level of attention. Javelin's role was impressive enough to leave a question whether tanks are necessary in battlefields. Although Javelin is expensive, it can destroy tanks that are 10 times or more expensive than the missile. The anti-tank missile will become a critical weapon in future battlegrounds.